In the first years of the 1980s, a mysterious disease began to appear in young, otherwise healthy people. The disease was given the name AIDS. The HIV virus was identified as its cause in 1984. No treatments were available. A diagnosis was essentially a death sentence. AIDS activists, artists among them, frequently argued that the Reagan administration was refusing to address the growing crisis. The president himself didn't mention the disease publicly until 1986, after more than 20,000 people had died. Patrick Buchanan, who was Reagan's press secretary at the time, called the syndrome God's revenge on gay men. A number of AIDS activist groups formed in this context, including ACT UP, AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power. Donald Moffat, the artist who made this image, was part of the collective Grand Fury, which had ties to ACT UP. With protests and a war of images, ACT UP pressured the government to invest in research and speed access to effective drugs. Many of the AIDS activist groups appropriated the techniques of corporate advertising. This placard by the art collective Group Material appeared on buses in Hartford, Connecticut, the heart of the insurance industry, at a time when many people with AIDS were denied coverage. And this billboard, which stood opposite the Stonewall Inn, site of the riots that initiated the gay rights movement, also served to write large a number of milestones in gay history and activism. General Ideas' AIDS logo mimicked Robert Indiana's 1960s love icon. Ironically mimicking the power of the HIV virus to reproduce itself, General Idea replicated this logo everywhere. They made wallpaper, billboards, subway ads, and low-cost multiples that could easily be purchased by the general public. By the end of 1989, the year General Idea began working with this AIDS logo, almost 90,000 people had died. Five years later, in 1994, two of General Idea's three members would also die of AIDS-related complications. In light of the growing tragedy, many artists also began documenting the tremendous impact of the AIDS crisis and exploiting the power of art to put a human face on the disease. I was invited to go to the University of Texas Hospital at Galveston by uh, Dr. Eric Avery, who's also an artist, and Dr. David Parr, who was part of the uh, AIDS team there. And it's uh, one of the great centers for infectious disease. So I spent a week going through the wards and it was following the doctors, um, social workers, psychiatrists, cleaners, um, technicians, scientists. 26 years old, white, gay, generalized weakness, temperature 30.5. Lost 40 pounds in a month, a quarter of his body weight. So he said to me, I've been dealing with this disease for eight years. My family didn't want me there for Christmas. And I can remember exactly what he said after that. When he went to visit his family, they'd bring out plastic plates and cups. Oh, this is the cleaner, she was beautiful. Sue, cleaner, cleans up bodily fluids, vomit, blood, urine, diarrhea. I volunteered to work here. That's something else I remember. People wouldn't work on that unit because they were frightened. It was more or less a hospice. And so everyone I drew in the sketchbook died. It was only in 1996, after more than 360,000 Americans had died of AIDS, that effective antiviral drugs became widely available. That year, AIDS deaths in the U.S. dropped for the first time since the epidemic began. Today, more than 1.1 million people are living with HIV AIDS in the United States. That they are living with AIDS, not dying of it, is due in part to the activist movements that included the artists we've been discussing. As of the year 2013, more than 33 million people are still living with HIV AIDS.